Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope everyone is well and welcome if this is your first time joining me. I hope you'll have a nice time. Before I jump into this week's topic, I quickly wanted to let you know that I have a public poll on my Patreon page. You can find the link to the poll in the description below. It's completely free to access so you don't have to be a patron. I'm just really interested in your opinion on which sketches I should put up as prints on my shop for a limited time. So I have 19 sketches on the poll and you can vote for as many as you'd like and I'd love to hear your opinion. Link in the description below. Also the piece that you'll see in this video will be this month's Patreon print so if you'd like to get your own copy you still have about a week to pledge and still qualify to get this in the post. Alternatively it will be on my shop very soon also. And now let's jump into this video. First of all, I wanted to thank all of you who gave me your opinion in my recent community post where I asked you what you wanted to see in this week's video. And after tallying all the votes, um, this painting won, but only by a very, very small margin. So I decided I'd post the sketchbook spread next week. That way everyone will get to see um, what they voted for. Those of you who saw my video last week might notice that this painting is the full size painting of a couple of mock-ups I did in that video. For some reason I've been in a space theme mood lately so I'll have a couple more paintings on this kind of theme um, of which you can see the mock-ups actually in last week's video if you're interested. For this painting, I decided to use only one colour, um, so it's a monochromatic painting, if you will, and I decided to only use my favourite colour of all time, which is Payne's Grey, which I believe is quite popular amongst a lot of artists generally. It's this beautiful grey-blue colour, it's quite a muted colour, and I absolutely love it, and I think I've come to terms slowly with the fact that I'm just not a bright colour type of person. I think I just gravitate more naturally towards um, browns and deep blues and I mean I do love red too <laughs> in conjunction with those but usually as a kind of pop of colour rather than a palette and so I've been experimenting a lot with that kind of muted colour palette recently because I've, I just think that's probably going to be a staple of my style in the future and as much as I always want to experiment with other styles because I always like them in other people. I'm always like, oh, well, that concept could be really cool if it had a lot of colours and looked really kind of cheerful and bright. I It just doesn't work. Like, if I really honestly look at myself when I'm painting, I don't enjoy using bright colours as much. And I just don't like the results as much as I do when I use darker, more muted colours. A mental process that I have been going through while I search for my style is looking at my work as honestly as I can and try and put aside all the preconceptions and all the expectations I have for myself and instead look at my process and my results as purely as possible and gather exactly what my natural tendencies are. A piece of advice that obviously I'm sure you've heard before and that comes up over and over again is not to compare ourselves to other artists, especially other artists who are a lot more experienced than we are. It's something that's really difficult not to do because you obviously always want someone to look up to, you want to see the goal that you're reaching for having been reached by other people so that you know that it's realistic and there is a part of us that needs to thrive towards other people, that needs to see that other people have achieved the dreams that we have, that we need to feel like we are going in a direction that is viable and we need our, our ambitions to be validated to some extent and I think that's absolutely fair enough. But I also do very much agree with the fact that it can definitely be a toxic thing to do and I think part of the toxicity comes from our desire to be that other person and from our desire to be someone that we're not. And I'm going to talk in the first person here because generally when I kind of 
ramble philosophically a little bit like this i like to refer to myself first because i know that that's how i function i'm sure i'm not the only one and this is generally why i do videos like this and why i share my thoughts on this kind of topic um i do prefer to talk in the first person person just because i don't really want to talk for other people i want others to be able to tell me that they're experiencing the same thing or to tell me how different their experience is but i don't want to talk for other people so that's why i'm going to refer to myself now but Really, I do believe that what I'm saying is a generalized experience and I know that other people are also experiencing it. And if you are, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And even if you're not, I'd love to hear what your experience is too. I've come to realize that the main harm that comes from me comparing myself to other people is that I am comparing myself to an ideal. I am comparing myself to what I implicitly understand as being um, maybe not perfect but ideal and I I am comparing myself to not other humans but my own fantasy self that I see manifested in other people. I have this ideal version of myself in my head that I wish I was and part of me constantly looks for clues that I am that ideal self but obviously an ideal self isn't your real self um, and I've been trying lately to look at who I am honestly and actually come to terms with the fact that I am a different person from the idol in my head that I've built that ideal from what I see in, and admire in other people and there is nothing wrong with striving to be better but I think there is harm in hoping to be someone that you are fundamentally not and in order to mitigate that harm I think I need to understand who I am first properly honestly and then figure out exactly what a realistic ideal of myself would be something that I can achieve without looking at what everyone else has achieved and that I will achieve my own version of um, of art my own version of life my own version of a person Sorry if this is becoming a little bit philosophical, I do have a tendency to kind of apply general observation I have about myself to my life in general, um, especially observation I've made through my art um, and, through my, and through observing my process, I do tend to think that it kind of seeps into my life and all aspects of it in general, so I go a little bit philosophical sometimes. <laughs> Basically, my point is that comparing your Comparing myself to other people has damaged me in that I always am disappointed in who I am because I, I realise I am not those other people I admire. And that's, that's damaging. <laughs> um, that's damaging for me to expect of myself to be those people because they've had a different life to me. They've had a different set of experiences. They've had maybe more time for their skill or more opportunities or they are fundamentally different to who I am. And so I need to forgive myself for not being them and I need to reconcile myself with who I am and reconcile myself with my natural tendencies in that, with, my, with the things that I naturally gravitate towards and make the most of those. I actually hone my skill in the things that I am I am naturally um, attracted to because loving your own work and loving yourself as an individual comes first with accepting what you are naturally inclined to do and so instead of, of wishing that I was this really colorful artist or this really whimsical artist or this really realistic artist I need to just accept that they are things that I fully enjoy doing that are not gonna look like what other people I admire do and that's absolutely absolutely okay because at least when I'm creating them then I'll be happy creating them and my the, the happiness I'm seeking in art will come from me accepting that I am my own person and that I don't need to be anyone else in order for things to still be valid. But anyway this became a little bit um, all over the place <laughs> but um, I'm kind of tired and I didn't really know where this video was going so I hope that you still like the direction it took and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and also hope that you like the painting and on that note take care everyone be good to yourselves and I'll see you very soon bye everyone <laughs>